Hello again, everybody, and welcome to another Hollywood Memories. I'm Dan Roberts, publisher of The Vegas Voice, and I get to co-host this segment with my favorite columnist, and that's Beverly Washington. <laughs> Beverly, thank you for inviting me back. Thank you, Dan. It's always a pleasure to be here. And thanks to all of you for watching. So today I have a very special guest with me. For those of you who read my column, you'll recall that a few months ago, I wrote about her because she was um, on TV, and I'm sure in many millions of homes, on a very special TV series called Dennis the Menace. She was Margaret. She's one of my dearest friends, and I'm so happy to have you today as my guest, Jeannie. And I know everybody's anxious to hear about your career. Thank you, Beverly, my <laughs> sweet friend. Sweet I friend, huh? yeah. Jeannie, I, I have the great pleasure of asking you questions, okay? so. What I like to know is you played Margaret Dennis the Menace. Yes. And what I'm trying to figure out is how did you even get the job? Okay, great story. Go ahead. It's a the Hollywood story. Can't make this up. My father was a tenor. My mother was a pianist. They moved from the Deep South to Hollywood to further his career. We lived on a street called Fernwood. Okay. Uh, Norman Lear used it in one of his shows, Mary Hart and Mary Hart, mm -hmm. and he had a, a show, Fernwood, USA. Yes. Oh, yes. I lived on that street. Okay. Oh, my, yeah. <laughs> and um, there are always singers at the house. One of my father's friends was Sheb Woolley, who did the Purple People Eater, which you may remember. Okay. My mother was working out the singers, and um, they were training us to be performers. We were singing arias phonetically uh, before we could, you know, didn't know what we were doing. I was being stretched for ballet. And this was before studios had parking lots. So executives used to park on the streets. One day there's a knock on the door and it's someone from the Lassie set saying, uh, we need a child uh, on the set right now. We don't want to pull John out of his 20 minute school period. And we spotted your little boy on the street, and would you let him come over and do this, hold that can of Campbell's soup? Yeah. Literally, Hollywood knocked on our door. They they, <laughs> they, they knocked on the the right door. So they went over there and did that. My grandmother hit it off with John's mom. They were both into health foods. And um, John would come over on his breaks from Lassie, and we would be extras on Lassie. That's how we got in. And then my dad was singing as a ringer and a choir with another ringer who was married to Glenn Shaw, an agent in Hollywood, who had his, his agency on the Sunset Strip, right next to 77 Sunset Strip. And she, and she said, now that your kids have had set time, let's see what we can do. They had Jerry Mathers, they had Ryan O'Neill. And that's how it began. You know, it, it's amazing. I mean, your story was to Jock Mahoney, and, and it, it's just remarkable how, when when you did Dennis the Menace, mm -hmm. how old were you? I started when I was eight, and I was um, twelve when we when we finished. And was your hair curly like that? Or, no. Oh yeah. I mean, how, how did they do that? Because I know they they changed you a couple yeah. of times. My hair was wavy, but that was the very last part of the audition process. They, they tried casting in L.A., then they went to New York, and then they came back to L.A., and they had it narrowed down to two. So they t t put me on the sound stage, and they did my hair in little pin curls, and then they would brush it over a stick and spray it. Right. And then they put Jay and me through a scene to see how our chemistry was. And Jay said to the director, I like Jeannie. <laughs> he said, I mean, a little kid Jane's, like that said it. Yeah, he said that to the director. And so... True story, I'm at home watching the Three Stooges in my little red rocker, <laughs> drinking a little <clears throat> juice full glass of beer, okay? <laughs> my was grandmother eight. was French, okay? Yeah. <laughs> and, the and the phone rings, and it's the agent. She goes, Jeannie got the job. As simple as that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I guess, I mean, you didn't wear glasses as a child. No. I mean, you had to wear no. those glasses. And I had long red hair and freckles, and I'd been going on interviews for six months straight and all the little pretty blondes, you know, like Beverly and whatever, getting the jobs. 
And it, finally, the right role came around. You know, and it was meant to be. And mm -hmm. I, I think Jeannie would have gotten the role anyway because she was very talented and looked the part and she was a good actress. But the fact that Jay North said that, it just kind of clinched it because they had that special chemistry. Mm -hmm. And so they kind of let him do the picking. I guess so, yeah. yeah. Which was adorable. So that's how it went down. Yeah. And, and when you did the scenes, mm -hmm. again, I've asked you this, were you nervous? Were no. You, you, it, it never dawned on you that, oh my God, people are watching me and, I, and, I'm, and I'm scared or I'm concerned. I was more afraid of public school. I would be in and out, <laughs> you know? I was terrified in public school. <laughs> on a set, nope, you know, put me in, you know, in character. Put me under the lights. I'm with the crew. You know, it was that was what made me tick. Who knows why, but it did. She was a natural. Yeah, you, know, you had to have been. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, same thing like you, Beverly. I mean, it was there were no nerves. There was no concern. There was no, oh my God, people are staring at me. Well, you know, not every child can do that. And I, that's I understand why, that. I know. That's I would, why I the ones of us that can continue right. on. You know, like I think they had to replace one of our cast members early on because he just. He couldn't do it. He didn't. He couldn't take direction from adults. Me, it's like I was born to do it, you know. <laughs> and um, so, like case in point, my father was singing a gig in Hawaii, and he brought me home a little hula skirt, you know, the bikini top. Thought Jeannie may need this someday, right? <laughs> so sure enough, in the dentist and minute script, calls from Margaret to do the hula. Now my mother had taken hula le lessons in Montgomery, Alabama from Princess Leilani, and she had a whole choreographed routine. So we get on set, and the director, I think it was Don Taylor directing that, just before lunch, he said, okay, we're gonna do the, the hula sequence after lunch, do you have anything? So I do this, you know, incredibly <laughs> choreographed hula, you know, blew him away. He added one piece of business where he had me knock my glasses off center, but he gave me the camera for the whole sequence. But, you know, we were just prepared. We were like this vaudeville family. We were, we were steeped in it, you know? And, and on the set of Dennis the Menace, mm -hmm. was there any, let's say, rivalry with Jane North as, hey, you know, oh, no. no, you're stealing the scenes and don't you, don't you remember? Not I'm with the, the kids. Story. I understand some of that went on between the adults, but not with this. Now with the kids, for instance, Charlie Barton, who I decades later found out directed Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein, which totally flipped me out. Yeah. He loved working with me. He was a, a physical director. And he, after one bit of business where I had to put a vest over Dennis and then onto Wilson because they were handcuffed together, <laughs> he said to my mother, he goes, if I had my way, she'd be in every episode. Oh, really? But apparently there was some, you know. And, but there was... I mean, there was no bitterness, no anger. Again, Beverly, you no. mentioned the same thing. You really didn't have any of that. No, and um, Jeannie and Jay North are friends still to this mm -hmm. day. Yeah, I, I mean, again, I find that remarkable, just like the friends that you have all these years. It, it's it's really very touching. It's beautiful. It really is. But you didn't have any of that. There was no fighting. There was no screaming. Did no. you feel you were special compared to the other kids? I felt different. Different. Different in what way? Which, to a degree, was very alienating. And that's why I had problems in adolescence mm -hmm. when the, when my career ended. I was like a fish out of water. So you were always, I mean, you were Hollywood. As a Hollywood kid. Hollywood, Hollywood. Because when we weren't working, we were either auditioning or we'd get home from the studio and there would be someone there to teach us a routine or to prepare us, you know, for an audition. And so it was like, you know, 24-7. And, and was that work? Was that like, hey, you know what? I don't want to do it. I want to watch TV or I want to listen to the radio or I just want to go out and play or I want to read. The playtime became a problem because that we had to save our energy. My brother couldn't come home hoarse from screaming, you know, <laughs> playing with kids. Uh, that was the only issue. And, you know, my parents, my mother and grandmother had a, had a pretty tight leash on us where the parent had to be home if we went and played. So that that was the one awkward thing. But we watched TV. And you know what's funny? I only watched Dennis the Minute. <laughs> I was in the episode. Really? Yeah. I can tell you in two seconds if I'm in an episode or not, because I didn't watch it. You know? Didn't watch it. <laughs> yeah. And when you watch yourself on TV, did you critique yourself? Or, I mean, Beverly, I mean, you must have had the same thing when you did TV and when you did movies. Did you look at yourself and say, oh, my God. 
I was great. Or, oh my God, I can't believe they hired me. I mean, I mean, do you, do you have that? No, I remember what was going on behind the scenes or in between takes. Okay. You know? And Beverly, um, I mean... Well, I don't think I ever said I was great, but as an adult and you look at old reruns, sometimes it's like, oh my goodness, <laughs> <laughs> like what were, what were they thinking with that hairdo and, and stuff yeah. like that? Or, oh, I could have done that better. But, you know, I think we're sometimes hard on ourselves, but they, they only say print if they're happy with what you've done. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. In, in the few minutes that we have left, you did, so, you also, besides Dennis the Menace, you were in the movie The Birds yes. with Alfred Hitchcock. Yes. And I find that to be just as amazing as with Beverly when she did Spider Baby, when you did these <laughs> scary stuff. What was it like meeting Alfred Hitchcock? Oh, it didn't phase me in the least. I was a seasoned professional. My brother had done an episode of Alfred Hitchcock Presents. And uh, I I was now a series, you know, um, regular or, or, or principal. And so I got a I walked in the office with my book of pictures, ready to sell myself like all child actors do. And and you were about how old? 10 or 11. Okay, go ahead. And here he is, sitting behind this huge desk and there's storyboard all over the walls of kids with their eyes gouged out, you know. And I'm going, oh, wow. I said, you know, I'm on a comedy series. Horror is my favorite and I've never done anything in horror. Oh, I'd love to do this. He didn't say a word to me. He didn't change expression on his face. I think he flipped through my book and then somehow it was a signal that the interview was over. And I thought, well, okay, that was different. I guess that, you know, and then got the word that I got the job. They flew us to Santa Rosa and they said, there'll be a script waiting for you when you get there. And the script in my room was that silly song that you, the school children sang. Yeah. And every motion Tippy Hedren made, is, it's on the page. It's on the page, okay? And um, so the, the mothers were kind of, the Hollywood children were kind of unhappy with that because we were u- being used as extras. But he hired a bu- several of us to fill in mm-hmm. the local kids. Once we're on set, he doesn't speak to us. Morning, Mr. Hitchcock. He just looks straight ahead. Straight ahead. And finally, his either chauffeur or the AD would, you know, acknowledge one of us. And he rode that huge camera truck. We ran down that gravelly hill. Right. You know, I think that sequence with the reverse took about three or four days to shoot. And um, I've give, I've provided you with a picture. Yeah, we're going to show my, that right Just now. my favorite. Okay. Right. But in the script, it says that it, it, treadmill work back on a sound stage is in the script. And I was supposed to be like girl number two. Well, so we get back to LA after the Bodega Bay location. And wouldn't you know it, there was a conflict with Dennis the Menace. So instead of putting on my dowdy costume for the birds, I had to get my Margaret drag on <laughs> and go be Margaret. And someone else, they put her in my dress and she got the close up. She got the close up. Yeah. And the idea of the birds coming, it, it never freaked I you never out. saw a bird until we were doing the reverse, which is the picture I've right. provided with you. I had a mechanical bird rigged to my back. We'd start down that hill and I'd flick a switch on my sweater and the bird would, you know, do its thing. And the AD is on the megaphone going, they're getting closer, they're getting closer. And, you know, and the first time down that hill, the bird actually drew blood. Oh, dear. Uh, <laughs> Ow, you know, the prop man looked at it. But it wasn't a real to, bird. No, it was, it was, well, it was a dead bird. It was yeah. stuffed, okay? <laughs> yeah. and, and so the prop man rigged its beak, made it softer, and we continued on, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Jeannie, I mean, I haven't even touched the questions that She's I had. She's got a million stories. I know, and, I wish and, and with Beverly, longer. we'd like to have you back I'd on. I'd love to come oh, back. Yay. We will do that. Beverly, I, I thank you, thank as you. always. I, you know, I always have this fear that after the, this is over, you're going to say, get off. Oh, gosh. No, no, no I love doing out. this. Thank uh, you, Dan. And thank you, Jeannie. My I, pleasure, yeah, Beverly. We're such good friends now. Because we didn't grow up in the same circles because I'm a lot older than she is. No, well, but now yeah. we've kind of um, just... Now we've clicked. merged. It doesn't matter. <laughs> you know, but, but between nostalgia and the radio yeah. shows, we've gotten to know each I, other. I think that's great. We'll have you back on if you don't mind. I'm I'd just hoping you. that Beverly will say you're on, but I'm off. But that's a whole different story. <laughs> Never. No, I Ladies, would love that. I thank you so, so much for being My here. My pleasure. And this is Dan Roberts for Hollywood Memory saying we will see you again soon.